Welcome to the World Brief. The content of the briefing includes. Mercedes U.S. executive warned against unionizing at mandatory meeting, UAW says. U.S. hits Russia with sanctions over Ukraine war, Navalny death. A reality check on Afghanistan's isolation under the Taliban. London police confirm that body recovered from river was that of chemical attack suspect Abdul Ezidi. South African prosecutors seek extradition orders in the case of $580,000 stolen from the president. Mercedes U.S. executive warned against unionizing at mandatory meeting, UAW says. Bloomberg. Mercedes-Benz CEO for its Alabama plant has been accused of holding a meeting to discourage the workforce from joining the United Auto Workers, UAW, union, according to an audio recording reviewed by Bloomberg News. The UAW has been trying to organize the workforce at the Alabama plant, which is the biggest of Mercedes's U.S. locations. The UAW, whose membership has declined since the 1960s, is campaigning to organize the non-union plants of 13 automakers, including European and Asian firms. U.S. hits Russia with sanctions over Ukraine war, Navalny death. Nikkei Asia. The U.S. has imposed new sanctions against Russia, hitting over 500 people and entities to mark the second anniversary of Moscow's invasion of Ukraine and in response to the death of Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny. President Joe Biden said the measures aim to ensure Russian President Vladimir Putin pays an even steeper price for his aggression abroad and repression at home. Russia's $2.2 trillion economy has proved more resilient to two years of unprecedented sanctions than either Moscow or the West anticipated. A reality check on Afghanistan's isolation under the Taliban. Diplomat. The recent UN meeting in Doha, Qatar, which aimed to bring together stakeholders to discuss the future of Afghanistan, highlighted a clear division among countries regarding engagement with the Taliban. While the West hopes to pressure the Taliban to change its policies through non-recognition, other countries have quietly expanded their engagement with the Taliban. The level of engagement has increased, possibly adding to the Taliban's belief that the rest of the world will eventually follow suit. A global consensus on Afghanistan remains far-fetched, and it will be a huge challenge to find a way to open a channel of dialogue between the various Afghan groups and the Taliban. London police confirm that body recovered from river was that of chemical attack suspect Abdul Ezidi. Associated Press. London police have confirmed that the body found in the River Thames is Abdul Ezidi, the man who was wanted in connection with a chemical attack on his former partner and her two daughters. The attack took place on January 31 in the Clapham area of South London. Ezidi's former partner and one of the daughters were injured in the attack. Ezidi's cause of death has been confirmed as drowning. The investigation into the attack is ongoing. South African prosecutors seek extradition orders in the case of $580,000 stolen from the president. Associated Press. South African prosecutors are seeking extradition orders and the arrest of additional suspects in connection with the theft of approximately $580,000 in U.S. cash that was found hidden in a couch at President Cyril Ramaphosa's ranch in 2020. Two men and a woman have already been arrested and charged in relation to the theft, and an extradition process has now been initiated to bring more suspects to South Africa. The scandal surrounding the theft engulfed Ramaphosa in controversy and led to an investigation by financial authorities, although he was ultimately cleared of any wrongdoing. The incident damaged Ramaphosa's reputation and he reportedly considered resigning as a result. Ramaphosa will seek re-election in a national election on May 29, with the ruling African National Congress Party facing a potential drop in support. Ex-Pakistani Premier Khan wants the IMF to link talks with Islamabad to independent audit of vote. Associated Press. Former Pakistani Prime Minister Imran Khan, who is currently serving a prison sentence, is writing a letter to the International Monetary Fund, IMF, urging it to link any talks with Pakistan to an audit of the country's recent election. Khan's party, the Pakistan tariq Saf, alleges that the election was rigged. The move comes as the IMF is set to release a key installment of a bailout loan to Pakistan. The IMF has not commented on Khan's letter. Khan's rivals claim he attempted to block a $1 billion tranche from the IMF to harm Pakistan's economy. Here's a look at moon landing hits and misses. Associated Press. Intuitive Machines, a US company that is part of NASA's effort to support commercial deliveries to the moon, has achieved a safe moon landing, making it the first private company to do so. The achievement puts the U.S. back in business on the moon for the first time since NASA astronauts closed out the Apollo program in 1972. The moon is littered with wreckage from failed landings over the years, and Intuitive Machine's successful landing puts the U.S. in a strong position to compete with China, who aims to put its astronauts on the moon by 2030. Hello, viewers. 
I am Dr. Hex, the resident observer from the Six Degree World, here to bring you the latest news from across the globe. Let's dive right in. In the US, Mercedes-Benz CEO for its Alabama plant has been accused of discouraging the workforce from joining the United Auto Workers, UAW, union. The UAW has been trying to organize the workforce at the Alabama plant, but it seems like Mercedes is not on board with the idea. I guess you can say they're putting the brakes on unionization. Meanwhile, the US has imposed new sanctions on Russia, hitting over 500 people and entities. This move comes as a response to Russia's invasion of Ukraine and the death of Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny. Looks like President Joe Biden wants to make sure Russian President Vladimir Putin pays an even steeper price for his actions. I hope these sanctions don't cause any friction between the two countries. Moving on to Afghanistan, it seems like there's a clear division among countries regarding engagement with the Taliban. While the West hopes to pressure the Taliban through non-recognition, other countries have quietly expanded their engagement. It's like a game of engagement limbo, how low can you go without recognizing the Taliban? Finding a global consensus on Afghanistan seems to be a tall order, but let's hope they can find a way to open a channel of dialogue. In London, the police have confirmed the identity of a body recovered from the River Thames. It turns out to be Abdul Ezidi, the suspect in a chemical attack on his former partner and her two daughters. Ezidi's cause of death has been confirmed as drowning. The investigation into the attack is ongoing, but one thing's for sure Ezidi's crime has come to a watery end. In South Africa, prosecutors are seeking extradition orders and the arrest of additional suspects in connection with the theft of $580,000 in cash found hidden in a couch at President Cyril Ramaphosa's ranch. Talk about a hidden treasure. The scandal surrounding the theft has caused quite a stir and even led to an investigation. Ramaphosa's reputation took a hit, but he's seeking re-election in May. Let's see if this incident affects his chances. Finally, in Pakistan, former Prime Minister Imran Khan, who is currently serving a prison sentence, wants the IMF to link talks with Pakistan to an audit of the country's recent election. Khan's party alleges that the election was rigged. Well, he's not playing around. He's bringing in the IMF to investigate. Let's hope this audit doesn't turn into a never-ending game of political monopoly. And last but not least, Intuitive Machines, a US company, has achieved a safe moon landing, becoming the first private company to do so. This is a big win for the US, as it puts them back in the moon game after nearly 50 years. The moon has seen its fair share of failed landings, but Intuitive Machines' success puts the US in a strong position to compete with China's moon ambitions. It's like a space race rematch. Well, that's all the news for today, folks. Remember, these are just snippets of what's happening in the world. If you have any thoughts or questions about these stories or anything else, feel free to join the discussion. I'd love to hear your perspectives. So, what's on your mind? Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.